Honestly, I wanted to do that show, musical and showing clothes, also speaking about fashion. I wrote the story, but I am not a writer. So what did I think the most easy way is to speak about how I became fashion designer. A little story like that about myself that I know the best. When you were at school, you had a teacher that was the opposite of inspirational, but yet... Definitely, because I was not good uh, in football. I was rejected by the other uh, children, you know. One day, I saw Folie Berger at the TV, I was nine years old. I sketched the girl with the feathers, with the ostrich feather, diamantine, and etc. fishnet. And the teacher saw it, and she wanted to punish me. So she made me to stand out, and she put on my back, you know, like one bit of paper, my drawing. So there they say, oh good, oh, make me a drawing, make me a drawing. So it's like that that I understood that by doing drawing, I should be accepted. Very early on, you yeah. chose models of all shapes, all yeah. sizes, all nationalities. Yeah. Do you feel that the fashion industry is just catching up with you now? I loved, at the beginning, you know, already people that were a little different. So I could love like the very beauty, classical, but also some that were with color of hair, very different. Some characteristic, a nose, which is broken nose, can be beautiful. You know, I love to show that also because it exists and it's beautiful. Strike the pose. One of the key things that happened to you was designing uh, Madonna's Blonde Ambition. You actually did 358 outfits for that tour. How did you do that? It was for all the tours, the dancers, etc. You know, I loved her because she was like a strong woman, you know, like a macho woman, uh, using of the conic bra that I did first for my teddy bear, but using that uh, uh, body like that, like an armure, yeah. not like a something like uh, erotic and sensual, no, 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 more like offensive, you know, like a, like a provocation mixed with a man's suit, you know, the women that were strong, there were always women that were strong, but it was not showing and it was not official. Now I think it's everywhere that you know that women are stronger than men. Florence Pugh has just uh, been at a Valentino uh, show with a sheer dress on, but you could see her nipples and she was getting a lot of heat for that you know yeah. are we becoming more prudish i think it's going back you see on a, a little it is even worse because there is like the reaction about abortion yeah. you know the things that go things that have been like liberated and now that going back to more like a strict on the uh, the society apparently is divided. Also, I think the interesting thing is that body shaming is a thing. And then, in fact, you, by championing all different shapes and sizes yeah. for so many years, body shaming is a very sad thing online, isn't it? If you look it in a very more pure, pure view, you can see beauty everywhere. I think that there is beautiful women with a lot of curves. And I remember that in the 70s, in, in London, there was a girl with a big, strong makeup, red hair, and like with the curves like that, that they were showing, you know, in a black dress, but it was fantastic. I love that, the ones that assume their difference. Viva la différence. <laughs> To be honest, I felt so much well, uh, better in, in London than when I was in Paris, where you have to be chic, and what is chic, and you know, that kind of thing. Do you still feel that sometimes? Oh yes, I still I prefer here. When you have a queen that have all the rainbow colors, you know, of each of the uh, clothes, you know, it's fabulous. You know, already she represents that extravagance uh, English and uh, yes, uh, which I admire and I am fascinated by. And now when you look at someone like Harry Styles wearing skirts, yeah. I mean, you were way ahead on that as well. I mean, men wearing obviously kilts in Scotland, but all over the place, men wear sarongs and so yeah. forth. And it wasn't about gender, was it? It was not about, about gender. Yes, in some way it is about gender, but at the same time, it's mean like, because clothes are not the gender. The gender is you know, in your head. Because I have been very influenced in my uh, adolescence, you know, by English rock star like David Bowie, for example. All that give me after the fact that yes, the men can also be like a uh, male object. <laughs> So you don't um, design now, but what you do is you appoint a designer each yeah. year to go in interpretation. You've just done the rousting one. And what was lovely at the end, you both walked out onto the balcony and acknowledged the people in the street. 
Yes, because I like, you know, I think that fashion is, uh, can be everywhere and also people that cannot see, can not be part and see a fashion show, it's good that they can see it. Music and everything mixed together, for me is that, you know, it's life, it's a mix of everything. But, 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 but I like a show and like to dream, I like to make dream and they come true in some way. And no reprise of Euro Trash? You wouldn't do Euro Trash again? No, I am too old for that now. And Antoine, no, he's still young. Hello, my friend. It's me again, Jean-Paul Gaultier. And this is me too. When he asked me to do it, I said, no, I cannot. I cannot play. He said, don't play. Don't play. Be yourself. Jean-Paul Gaultier, thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure.